Oh, I'm going to talk to you this morning about the package of love. Ruth chapter 4, the package of love this morning. Ruth 4 verse 1, then went Boaz up to the gate, sat him down there, and behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down, and he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. As, and as they sat down, he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, uh, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was uh, our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, that I may know. For there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. The package of love this morning. God, I thank you for the power and the authority of your word. I pray this morning that every person that is in this room, God, would feel the package of your love this morning. The power of your saving love, your powerful love. God, together we love. And I pray this morning, let your powerful presence, God, minister to every person here this morning. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. People often describe the book of Ruth as a love story. But as the story unfolds, we realize that it's about more than love between two people. It's about God's amazing love for all of humankind. The story of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz, you read it, it's only four chapters. It's one of the most moving accounts in the whole Bible. The events occurred during the period of the judges, about a century before David became king of Israel. Set in the midst of the great hardship and the tragic loss, the story focuses on loyalty and faithfulness that starkly contrasts uh, uh, the pagan Moabite culture from which Ruth originated. And the story is also a clear example of God's faithfulness in bringing about his plan of redemption using unexpected people in amazing ways and during a time of frequent unfaithfulness of God's people. Yet the book of Ruth begins with a, an Israelite family, Elimelech, Naomi, his wife, and their two sons, Malon and Chilion. And they're living in Moab. Originally, uh, they were from Bethlehem of Judea. The family had left uh, the land of its inheritance because there was a great famine. But tragedy soon struck them. Elimelech died. Both of Naomi's sons, they married Moabite women. And within 10 years, both of her sons also had died, leaving Naomi and her daughter-in-law, uh, daughters-in-law outside the the kin group of their husbands that uh, they lived in Moab. It's hard for us to, uh, modern as modern readers, to comprehend the, the hopeless, hopelessness of the situation, but these three women found themselves in a land where they had no rights, none. They lacked, uh, they lacked the intimacy of a family. They, there was a tragic situation that they were in, and they were outside of what was known as the clan, the family, cut off from its protection and provision. Their losses were devastating in every way. They were a non-family with no means of providing for themselves. They had no access to anything for themselves. The options were for such marginalized women were few and unpleasant, completely dependent on the generosity of other people. And they faced starvation and also death. Naomi and Ruth decided they were going to return to Israel. Naomi's, uh, Naomi's conversation about that is 
uh, you know what, Ruth, you just stay here and I'm going back home. And Ruth's response was, uh, I, I, I'm going with you. I'm going to be with your people and I'm going to be with your God. This is a lady from the Moabite uh, uh, family and yet she's making, she's making a, a, a statement that is going to be life-changing for her future. Naomi was a survivor, but she was returning with nothing. And Ruth was leaving the gods of Moab and, uh, and, and, and anything that was to do with her family, she was leaving behind. Uh, the people, without any, anything uh, that they were taking with them, nothing. They, they just were going empty-handed back to Israel. Naomi, Naomi was deeply discouraged. You can see it uh, in Ruth 1 and 13. She, she was certain that the hand of the Lord had come against her and she was being punished in some way. She believed that God himself had made uh, uh, her life bitter. Her, her name, Naomi, means pleasant. And yet, uh, when she comes back, she says, call me Mara, not Naomi, Mara. Uh, Mara means bitter. Uh, it's like uh, my life used to be pleasant, but now it's no longer. Uh, it, it used to be full, but now it's empty. I come back with nothing. I come back uh, in a very sad state. How could, how could this actually be such a powerful love story? In the midst of, of their loss, God was orchestrating an amazing plan. An amazing plan that was not just for Ruth. An amazing plan that would not only be an encouragement to Naomi. An amazing plan God was orchestrating that we see later on in the Bible how he had his hand in this situation with this young lady. And so the love story begins. The book of Ruth is often described as a love story. It certainly contains elements of two people growing in love in a unique way of their ancient Near Eastern culture. But as this love story unfolds, we realize that it's more than a love shared between just two people. Ultimately, it is about God's amazing love for humankind, especially his desire for his people to not only experience his love for themselves, but to reach out and display it in such a way that God is made known to the lost, the hurting, the, the, the hungry. God's request is that his love is going to be shown through the life of Ruth. Ruth's request, uh, as you see in Ruth chapter 3 verse 9, uh, in, the, in, the, in amongst this love story, she says to, to Boaz, spread the corner of your garment over me. So you have to, you have to see the setting. So all of a sudden is, you have this young lady and they've got nothing to eat. And Naomi says, uh, why don't you go down to the field and, and glean a little bit of what's left. Just a little bit of what's left of the grain and Barley, the wheat's coming a little bit later. Uh, just, just go down and see what's left over. And there goes Ruth. Ruth's going down, and, and uh, there's a, quite a few workers there, uh, quite a few young men that are working there. You can read the story. It's pretty interesting. And all of a sudden, the owner of the field shows up. His name's Boaz. And his attention is caught. Who is that? Well, Naomi has returned, and she's brought back with her a young lady. Well, I'm telling you guys, all you young men, don't you dare touch her. <laughs> don't even look at her. Don't want you smiling at her. <laughs> don't want you doing it. <laughs> I've got my eye on her. <laughs> we don't know exactly how old Boaz is. He's probably much older than these young men, young snappers. <laughs> But he makes it very clear to them, uh, no, you guys keep working. Don't you bother her. And, and even more than that, when she wants a drink, let her drink from our water pots. 
See, to us, that, that seems like, well, you know what? You give someone a glass of water, a bottle of water. Seems like an easy thing to do. It wasn't an easy thing to do then. Getting water was work. <laughs> if she's thirsty, give her from our water pots. And if she's hungry, let her eat from our food as well. Got my eye on her. And the story goes on. <laughs> Naomi sees Ruth come home, and she's, she's, got a, quite a, she's got a quite a bit of gleanings there. She's got, <laughs> uh, it couldn't have been that much left over in the field. Oh, well, here's, here's what Boaz did. He said, young men, uh, even the sheaves that you gather, take out of them some of those and lay them there so, so they'd be easy for Ruth to collect. This is like, this is like putting out breadcrumbs to have someone follow. Put out a little extra for Ruth and let her, she comes home with a way more than necessary. This is not just food for them. She's got extra. And Naomi said, something's going on here. I think there's a little crush happening. The Bible doesn't use that word. I'm just putting that in there. <laughs> so she says to Ruth, here's the deal, Ruth. Uh, Boaz, he's of our kinsmen. He's going to be down at the threshing floor. He's going to be working hard down there. And he's going to be threshing all that barley. And, and I want you to go down. And after work... After he's done, he's fallen asleep. I want you to lay at his feet. At his feet. Now, there's significance to that. Obviously, there was nothing sexual about it whatsoever. She's laying at his feet. She uncovers his feet. And to his surprise, when he wakes up, there's a woman at his feet. What's the deal? Something's going on. Who are you? What are you up to? And from that moment, he realizes also, this is the lady from the field. This is the lady from the field. It's, it's an amazing story. I, I've run through for the first three chapters just to get to where I read to you from, chapter 4. Oh, go home and read it. Go home and read it. And chapter 4 starts with, they're, they're in love. They're in love. But the process of that day was very unique. The process of that day was, uh, Elimelech has died. That's Naomi's husband. And the way they did things, they, they had to redeem the land. Someone was going to buy this land from Naomi and and uh, this was a big, long process. And so Boaz thought, he, I'm going, to, I'm going to go about this process, and I'm going to gather ten elders together, and we're going to have some witnesses here, and there's someone actually that has more say than me. He actually has a right to the field before me. So he, he comes to the ten Ten elders, and the one that's got more rights is there. And he said, uh, are you willing to redeem the field? Oh, yeah, I want to buy that field. I want that field. Well, just so you know, when you redeem the field, Ruth also comes with it. Oh, I don't want the field. His response was, he didn't. He didn't want a Moabite woman that would have a son possibly to him that would gain heir over his own children. And so, oh, he wanted the field, but he didn't want the person. He wanted the stuff, but he didn't want what really mattered. And so he said, no, I'm not interested in buying the field with Ruth. Boaz was pretty excited about that. It was like a setup. You want the field? Sure. You get Ruth. No thanks. 
And at that moment, Boaz decided, well, as I have read to you in this passage, that he has become the redeemer of the kin. See, God's plan is so great because the love story of Ruth and Boaz takes place and they get married and they have a boy. His name is Obed. And Obed is the father of Jesse. And Jesse is the father of David. And David becomes king of Israel. The bloodline of the Messiah. All through this incredible love story of Ruth and Boaz. I want to show you just a few principles this morning of how powerful this package of love is. The package of love that is shown to us through uh, the book of Ruth. This, uh, this story is not just uh, something for that day. The story is not just something that, oh, it's neat to read. No, there's principles that are seen in the life of, of Boaz that is embodied in his life that are, are such a type of our Redeemer. The principles of Boaz in the story is a fascinating, romantic love story. Boaz was in a position to marry any woman he wanted. He did not even date Ruth. I don't suggest that now, but I'm just. He didn't even know much about her. But he was looking for a wife, and he found what he was looking for. She caught his attention. Even though she may have been tired and exhausted, in the field, he went away past uh, the tiredness and the exhaustion of Ruth, and he admired her. Boaz was in a position to be married, and he wanted his character to be validated. And what is it that's embodied in Boaz that is so powerful for us today? Number one, he was trustworthy. Boaz was a trustworthy person. Ruth 2 and 1, he is described as a kinsman and a mighty man of wealth. He was deserving of trust. He was dependable, and he was in a position to take a future wife. Ruth did not have to worry about provision, and, and they were going to be taken care of if she married Boaz. It was easy for people uh, to trust someone who, who had a reputation and, and was honest and reliable and responsible. She she was not going to have to worry when she married Boaz. Well, let me tell you, the redeemer of Boaz of his kin is not even comparable to the trustworthiness of our almighty God. When he redeemed you and purchased you uh, with his own blood, uh, you don't have to worry uh, about provision. Uh, you don't worry uh, if you're going to be taken care of. Uh, if he's got the ability to get you all the way to the end, you don't have to worry about it. When you got, uh, hallelujah, saved by the almighty, uh, he's the most trustworthy person you'll ever come in contact with. You can be assured. Trusting in God, a confidence, a dependence upon Him, a sincere, a, a sincere dependence. Listen, it's not about idols or talents or riches or power. You, when you got to, in contact with the Almighty, uh, everything was going to be taken care of. A universal love of God that's for all humankind no matter what the circum circumstances are the encouragement we have about a trust in him arises from 
his ability, his relationship with us, his promise with us, his, his conduct no matter what age or, or, or what nationality or what language or, or what country. None of those things matter to God. His, his trustworthiness is that you can be assured that you can trust him. He brings you safety and courage and peace and faithfulness and and the end for you is, is not here. The trustworthiness of, of your Redeemer is, hallelujah, everything's going to be okay. See, the love story can only be written to a certain extent with Ruth and Boaz. She knew that there wasn't going to have to be any worry about her future, future famine, her future, her children. She wasn't going to have to worry about future inheritance. She wasn't going to have to worry about any of those things. She had found her man. Oh. Well, you know what? Forty-some years ago, when I come in contact with the Almighty, and He filled me with His Spirit, and I gave my life to him. There's been times in my life that maybe the concern has risen of, of what future is and what's happening. But when you stop and think about the trustworthiness of God, he has never let me down. He's never left me forsaken. He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. He will take care of you. You don't have to worry about it. Hallelujah. You put your faith and trust in him, and he will never let you down. Never. He always has your best interest at heart. Always. The trustworthiness of God is not, not even comparable to Boaz. Mm. Boaz was a provider. Boaz was a provider who was qualified and equipped to care for his wife. But we have a provider that is greater than Boaz. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever you need, you can find in him. If you're lonely today, he'll provide you a comfort a friendship. If you're needing a healing today, he'll provide you a, a healing, a body, soul, mind, and spirit. If you're in need of a, a miracle of some sort today, let me tell you, he is your provider. You can be assured, Ruth, that Boaz is going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Let me tell you this morning, everybody at Mission Point and anybody listening online, hallelujah, God is your provider this morning. He'll take care of you until the end. You don't have to worry. God will provide for you. My God shall supply. Not might, maybe. Qualifications behind it. No, no. My God shall supply all your need. Boaz was a protector. He encourages Ruth to glean in his field. He wanted to make sure she was safe. Her protection was his number one priority. He told the young men in the field that Ruth was off limits. <laughs> She's off limits. Don't put a hand on her. Don't look at her. Don't touch her. Don't even smile at her. She's off limits. Boaz was Ruth's protector. Let me tell you, when you gave your heart to the Lord, he became a protector of you. You became his child. Hallelujah. He engrafted you into the vine. He sealed you with his spirit. He adopted you as sons and daughters. 
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Let me tell you, he is your protector. Be still and know that he is God. Yeah. He doesn't just protect us from harm on the highways. or He, he protects us from the enemy. He protects us from ourselves at times. He is our protector. He's our refuge and strength. Boaz was compassionate. Boaz was a kind and compassionate person. Every opportunity he had, he showed that kindness. He was a very generous man. You see that in this story. He loved to help those who were in need. That was the personality of Boaz. And yet Boaz does not at all have the love that God shows for you and I. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The compassion of God was more than, than leaving a few extra a few extra little sheaves of barley. No, his love for you was so great. He took on the form of man, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And as he said, it is finished, he accomplished everything he came to do. Hallelujah, that you and I this morning could live in him. Hallelujah, be free from sin. Take on the power of his name and baptism and be filled with the infilling of his presence, his spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, he purchased you. He loves you so much. You would do anything for your kids, your family, your grandkids. Your love for them is amazing, I'm sure. I heard about a new great-grandchild before church. The statement was he was perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah, and the love that we would have for our kids, and great-grandkids. grandchildren, each other, brothers and sisters, and yet none of that compares to the compassion of the almighty God. It goes far beyond Boaz. What the blood of bulls and goats could not do, he sacrificed once and for all that the sins of mankind could be forgiven. His compassion took him to the cross for you. Boaz's character, Boaz has such great character. He proves himself to be a man of good character. His character shows the mental and the moral qualities of a good person. It is the stable and the distinctive qualities built into the individual's life that determines the response regardless of the circumstances, the uncertainty of life. And, and, and he had such good qualities that, that Ruth knew that this, this is a good man. He's got good character. And that love story is so awesome that the morals and the qualities of Boaz was enough for Ruth. She was excited about 
it was, she was excited about this man. And yet the Lord's character goes so far beyond. The redeeming character of God is so far beyond. Listen this morning. God is infinite. He is self-existing without origin. God is immutable. He never changes. God is self-sufficient. He has no needs. God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. God is omniscient. He is all knowing. God is omnipresent. He's always everywhere. God is wise. He is full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. God is faithful. He is infinitely unchanging in truth and justice. God is good. He is infinitely unchanging, kind, and full of goodwill. God is just. He is infinitely unchanging, right, and perfect in all he does. God is merciful. He is infinitely unchanging in compassion and love. God is gracious. He is inclined to spare the guilty through his grace. God is loving. He, he is unchanging in his love toward us. God is holy. He is unchanging in perfection. God is glorious. He is infinitely beautiful and great. Let me tell you, the character of God goes far beyond Boaz this morning. There's something about the God you serve that his character is so amazing. Everything about him is right. The package of love that he has given you and I is absolutely incredible. When we think about how trustworthy he is, and when we think about how, how he's our provider, he's our protector, how compassionate he is, and his character this morning, it, it dwarfs the, 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 the love story of Boaz and Ruth, even though it's so incredible in the Bible, yet it's, uh, it's, so, it's so small compared to the package of love that Jesus has shown you and I. We just spent the last day and a half speaking into people's lives that are trying to enrich their marriage. My wife was sharing such wonderful things. She was stepping on my toes, too. And uh, after her first session, some man responded with, I don't know how Brother Carter is going to compete with that. <laughs> I didn't even bother trying. We're talking about how to love each other. How to have our marriages enriched and become stronger. And we're trying to, we're trying to help people in the natural in their lives today. And that's good. That's good. But none of that compares. It doesn't compare to how awesome the Lord has been to me and you. It doesn't compare to the package of love he gave you and I. And as many stories as you want to read in the Bible that are so awesome about his love, there is none greater, none greater. And he allowed his own creation to nail him to a cross. To 
to bear the sins of mankind so that you and I could be forgiven. The wages of sin was death, but he paid the price for those wages. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, yet he sees you through his precious blood. He sees you not as what you were, but he sees you as what you will be. And he looks at you and I with this incredible package of love that is beyond my comprehension. Can't even comprehend how incredible it is. And everybody needs to hear it, experience it, and understand it. And if you don't feel loved this morning, you're missing the love of God. If the love from society has let you down, let me tell you, the love of God will never, ever let you down. If you're not feeling proper love from your family, let me tell you, He has brought you into his family. If you don't have a great relationship with your father, he's become your everlasting father. Let me tell you, there's something about his love that's greater than anything we could ever imagine. Well, I don't know what my future holds. Let me tell you where he is right now. He's preparing a place for you that where he is, you may be also. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. However far down the road... I can assure you, he's coming back for his church. He's coming back for the bride of Christ. He's returning, hallelujah, hallelujah, for the family of God. Those who have died will be raised from the dead, and they will meet the ones that are still alive and remain, and we will be caught up together with him in the clouds. Don't ever lose sight of how much he loves you. He's not just trying to get you through here. This is just, this is just a, a temporary home. His, his, his desire has always been that you will spend eternity with him. Oh, let's not stop preaching about heaven. We can give you all the self-helps you want for today. But today, th this is, listen, this is not it. This is not it. If God calls me home today... Hallelujah, life on earth has just ended, but my life has just begun. Hallelujah, something powerful. Hallelujah, through the package of love was extended to you and I. Oh, music come. You've heard it said. Oh, they look so much in love. They look so much in love. I'm just looking across here. All the people in love today. They look so much in love. Something happening in your life and heart. You love your kids and your grandkids, your family. Some people even love their dog. People's in love. In the natural sense, that's understandable. We have high affections for things in this life. 
That's understandable. But your love today for him, the Almighty. He, loved you. he loves you no matter what. But what about your love for him this morning? Has the package of love that he's given you affected you in such a way that more than anything in this world, you love him? You've fallen in love with him. Oh, not, not to the sense of what we think we, we fall in love. There's really no such thing. But you've given your heart to him, your life to him. You've experienced the love of God. It's changed your life in such a way that you'll never be the same. And because of his great love towards you, you have made a choice to love him. Not because you have to, but because you want to. And that love towards him is greater than anything else in your life. Greater than anything else. Stand if you would. See, See, Boaz was a trustworthy provider who protected Ruth with love. He had great character. Oh, what a wonderful person Boaz is as an example in the Word of God. But this morning, you can trust in Jesus. He's your provider, your protector. Because he loves you beyond measure. And everything about him is perfect. I invite this morning, anybody in the congregation, you've never experienced that love the way you'd like to. Anyone who's watching online this morning, you'd like to experience that love the package of love that I'm talking about today that the Lord has provided to each of us. And I would encourage you to activate your faith towards Him this morning and believe, believe that He's God. Commit your life to Him. Ask Him to come into your heart, into your life, into every part of of what you do repent of your sin allow the power of his forgiveness to redeem you this morning through his unending love let that be a beginning of a journey towards walking towards him being baptized in his precious name and being filled with his wonderful spirit let it be a journey of God taking you in paths that he has designed for you from the beginning. The package of love that he wanted to share with you. He loves you so much. I opened the altar this morning. Would you just come and love him? Would you just come and love our mighty God this morning? our wonderful Savior, our powerful Redeemer. See, He opened the pathway through Ruth being redeemed that it wasn't just going to be for Jews. It wasn't just going to be for one group of people. Ruth was not a Jew. He opened the pathway for all mankind to be redeemed, that every person would have the opportunity to know Him that every person would have the opportunity to experience his love. Would you come and do that right now as we sing unto 